The Labor Department says inflation is at a 40-year high. The Consumer Price Index, which tracks a basket of goods and services, jumped 1.2% in March. That is a whopping 8.5% increase from the same time last year and the fastest annual rate of inflation since December of 1981. According to a CBS News poll, higher prices have been difficult for a majority of Americans. Janet Chamberlain shows us how businesses and families are struggling. Inflation slicing into profits at Rogel's Barbecue Company in Houston. Let me get a one meat plate. Brisket has gone up 40 cents a pound in the last few days. Okay. Owner Russell Rogel's orders 2,200 pounds a week. How has inflation impacted your business? Inflation's impacted everything about our business. I mean, anything from the proteins to the paper goods to the chemicals we use to clean, every single thing that we use has, has gone up. And those costs get passed along. You do have to raise your prices, but you can only go up so much before you price yourself out of the market. So they'll look at the menu board and look down there like, whoa, you went up, and I'm like, look, we, we have to. We don't have a choice. There's pain across the board. Even with wages rising, the average household is now spending $327 more every month on goods and services. Meat prices are up almost 15 percent. Overall food price is nearly 9 percent. Energy prices skyrocketing 32 percent in the past year. And in just a month, gas prices jumped a whopping 18 percent. In Florida, it cost second grade teacher Kristen Outer almost $90 this week to fill her tank which was brutal, but the groceries is really, really taking a toll unless teachers get a massively huge pay increase. Um, I can't afford to continue being a teacher. I have to put my family first. Russell Rogels thought after the pandemic, the worst was behind him. Times now, he says, are even leaner. Our choices are go up on pricing, cut our quality, cut our portions, or close the doors. I don't want to do the last three, so we have to go up on pricing to survive. A new study finds 75% of small businesses have had to raise prices. They are already struggling to keep workers, and now fear inflation might do them in. Jamie? It is tough out there. Janet Chamberlain, thank you. For more, I want to bring in Steve Odlin. He is the president and CEO of the Con Conference Board. Steve, thanks so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. We just were listening to some of the tough decisions Americans are having to make now. You know, I'm wondering, as inflation worsens, many are worried the U.S. is going to enter a recession. Can you remind us what defines a recession and whether you believe we are headed there and if there's anything we can do to stop it? Yeah, so, you know, a recession typically is described as when you have two consecutive or more uh, quarters of, of negative growth. In other words, a decline in GDP. So the conference board has done you know, metrics and forecasts related to the GDP and what's happening with inflation. And we just don't see an, uh, a recession happening uh, this year or into next year. Now, there are some you know, things that could worsen along the way that, that could drive that. But, but e even given inflation being the highest it's been in, in, in 40 years, we don't see it. You know, that, that is a long time ago that we had inflation yeah. this level, which, which means that more than half of the U.S. population, which is more than half the U.S. population has been born since the last time we had this level of inflation. So most people don't know what to do with this. Now, it's driven by supply chain shortages that, you know, are coming from the pandemic shutdowns, and now the war in, in Ukraine. And, and uh, you know, some of these issues are transitory, meaning some will uh, go by. Consumer goods are refilling the pipeline, so you'll see some of that go away. Services, of course, are coming back. But, you know, and, and we do have a big impact right now that we're not talking too much about, but with the bird flu. And, and so it's infecting our poultry stocks and having to uh, do mass slaughter there. Longer term are the issues that we're worried about, which is food and energy uh, driven by the cost of oil. Uh, the other issue is microchips. And, you know, we don't talk too much about it, but the majority of microchips are made in Taiwan. It's very specialized. Um, mm -hmm. A new plant takes 24 months and, you know, 30 to $100 billion. You can't just uh, replace the supply. If there are issues between China and Taiwan that affect that, more supply chain issues, more shutdowns, 
you know, that could continue to, to hit it. And that's what the issue is with cars causing the shortage there and the inflation uh, with cars. And the final thing, of course, uh, as we just heard in, your, in, in the last segment, is, is labor costs. And labor yeah. costs are going up because we have virtually full employment. And so the cost of labor is going up. And this is uh, continuing to drive price increases. So it's a perfect storm, Jamie, of all these things coming together at the same time. Well, you know, there's just so much global uncertainty, as you were just talking about, that could really impact these things. I think the biggest fear for people is that all these businesses are trying to hire, we're coming back, you know, there are all these staffing shortages, that we don't want to go from that to then all of a sudden having to lay people off within a short period of time. I know the Federal Reserve is hoping to curb inflation by raising interest rates. Can you explain a little bit about how this works, and is it potentially too late well, you know, it, it's not too early <laughs> for the Fed to <laughs> There you go. They, uh, they raised them by a quarter of a point, uh, you know, already. The estimate is that they'll go up by a half a point next. But they've said that they're going to go up between two and three percentage points. Um, that's pretty typical, you know, to get it up to about the 4% rate. It may have to go higher uh, than that. And so the question is, will they be more aggressive? Now, the, the risk here is that if the Fed is too aggressive, and raises them too fast. And remember, they're also selling off uh, $8 trillion in assets at a clip of about $100 billion a month. That also puts pressure on, uh, you know, on the money supply. But as they're doing all this, if they overdo it, that can create a, a recession. So people are worried about you know, being too aggressive here. And you know, in, in the Fed's defense, this is why they haven't moved more aggressively, because they right. thought a lot of it was going to be short term. That's, you know, you don't think there's going to be a recession, which I think a lot of people are probably relieved to hear someone like you say that. But what risks are you finding that the economy could potentially face now in the second half of the year? And do you have advice for consumers and for businesses? I mean, I can't even believe going to the grocery store now and it's seven, eight dollars for just a little basket of mushrooms. You know, what do we do moving forward? Yeah, it's it's really bad. Well, you know, the conference board projects that inflation will be uh, nearly 6% up for the entire year this year, and then a at least 3% next year. Now, that is still above the, the Fed target of 2%. It should impact our GDP and slow it down. Uh, we're projecting 3% uh, this year and 2.2%, but that's still a long way away from uh, you know, recessionary levels. But you know, here's what could, could really hit us, Jamie. If, if consumer spending tumbles because interest rates then impact car financing, home financing, credit card debt, and so forth, and, and people just say, okay, enough, I can't, I can't finance it, and, and we're going to stop spending, that's 70% of the economy, and that could trigger mm. it. It could, it could continue, inflation continues to rise more strongly, Fed could take even more aggressive uh, stance than they've talked about. A global recession caused by expansion of the war in Ukraine, other supply chain shortages, you know, China has shut down Shanghai. If they continue the shutdowns for COVID reasons, that will impact the supply chain again. You know, when they do the shutdowns, they shut the ports and we can't right. get the goods everything. out. Uh, yeah. Everything. If home prices fall, uh, that could be uh, an issue. Food shortages are a worrisome thing. You mentioned them, but you know, you've got a huge supply of grain, coming out of Ukraine, half the world's supply of sunflower oil. That doesn't sound, you know, who uses sunflower oil? Well, they're using a lot of products. I do. <laughs> so, yeah, well, but even beyond the oil itself, it's they're using prepared products. And so, the, you know, it's hard to get substitutes for this. So all of this and expansion of the war, COVID resurgences are the risk factors that could drive this. But we are not predicting uh, a recession at this point. All right, so I'll take a deep breath, but I might have a little trouble getting to sleep tonight, I think. Steve Odlin, thank you so much for being with us and for breaking all that down. We appreciate it.